support the show, go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Era begins again. What's up, everyone? How you doing? Got some exciting news for you. Yes, I do. The radio station is coming along. Motorcycle Madhouse Radio 24-7 is going to be coming your way. And we're getting a lot of good DJs, too, man. They got a lot of awesome show ideals. It's going to be a classic rock, hard rock. We're even going to have a show there that's going to be 80s metal. And a bunch of talk shows, man. It's going to be available on all platforms, man. We're going to have an app where you can actually plug it into your radio and listen to us. Better than any AM, FM station you can get out there. So that is going along good so far with uh, the premiere September 1st. Again, as we go on, I'll give you a lot more information on it. If you want to have your own show, be a part of the radio station, email me, info at insanethrottle.com. If you got a podcast you want to throw on there, let me know, man. I'm helping you out, man. It's going to be a good time and uh, a different type of station, man. Something that's in your face, ready to go, awesome songs, awesome talk radio. So that's going to be happening. It's good. Uh, you know what? Everybody's excited for it because, you know, we need something different in the biker community uh today we got some uh yeah as usual news and oh by the way yes this is still gonna be the same platform with the newscast youtube and all that stuff i was actually thinking with the radio station maybe having some of the djs film it live and stuff maybe start a new youtube or facebook i don't know what I'm, i'll figure it out man so many things on the plate uh if you were on my Instagram page, I was out, uh, what was it, uh, yesterday or the day before, you know, riding around, going to check things out, and there was an accident, like, right in front of me. Uh, a guy on a bike ran the red light and lost it, man. He, you know, head all messed up, bleeding every damn wear, and it was like, damn, man, no wonder. You know what? I'm really thinking about that helmet stuff right now, but hopefully he is okay. He was, uh conscious and stuff like that old fella man old fella you know how those uh gray beards are tough as freaking nails so i'm hoping that uh he's doing okay but i got some of the video over on uh instagram if you wanted to take a look at that uh also i had a, a very interesting question uh conversation i guess it would have to be uh with one of the other creators and uh, actually, the question was from uh, an audience member, but he asked me, it, it was it was pretty interesting, he asked me, well, do you consider all one percenters the toughest of the tough, and I'm sitting here thinking, you know what, you guys are buying into that media bullcrap. A lot of people are really buying into that stuff. And it's a sad state of affairs, let me tell you. You know, we just got done covering a lot of the Umbrella Man stuff, and that is still out there with controversy. He is, he isn't, all that kind of crap. And I talked about the pop-up club uh, phenomenon with that as well, why you know, MCs don't like that stuff. Well, you know, they came back with this, you know, uh, would you, f why don't they fight one-on-one, -on -one, blah, blah, blah? Well, uh, you're going to get wolf pack, man, rat packed. That's the way it works. You know, you know, that's why some people are just better off being motorcycle enthusiasts. But, you know, buying into this gang stuff is really idiotic, okay? I've said a thousand damn times, a thousand damn times that, most of your one percenters, there's always, you know, going to be a group that does their own thing. And there's been a lot of one percenter clubs that I know of some top ones that actually tell their members, hey, if you're going to get into that kind of stuff, that's on you. But, we're, you know, we're not paying for the lawyers and all that crap like we used to. And they've been able to come up with uh, money that they haven't been able to uh, have otherwise to invest back in that a club. 
because they told them guys, you know, that's the way it is. So when you hear people talking about uh, one percenters, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why I do the wall of shame. Uh, they're all criminals. They're all dealers. They're all gun runners. That is just not the case. Yeah, maybe, you know, that in the, you know, maybe in the old days, a lot of guys did that. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say everybody's Cub Scouts or Girl Scouts, depending on what you want to say, uh, back then. But there's such more technology now that it's really hard to get into any of that type of stuff. And truth be known, these guys are welders, tattoo artists, bike repair guys, auto mechanics, truck drivers is a big one. That's not a gangster, okay? It really ain't. You know, maybe, you know, they're wearing a 1% patch of an old club. But what the media says is totally false. And I don't know how many times I got to address that type of stuff. <clears throat> One thing is for sure. You got the bike set. Yeah, you got one percenters, top of the food chain. That's the way it always been. But when you're talking about gangster stuff, you're talking about guys from the street, man. They don't care if you're wearing this patch or that patch. There's different organizations that, I don't know how you would do it, rate them on a scale, I guess. It's all about money and, uh, you know, how far you're going to take it to where you're going to rate them. But I cannot you know, stand behind the ideal that one percenters are gangs. I just can't. You know, real gangs are out there. They're living their life, making their money. You know, they're, it's either you're facing prison or you're facing the grave in that kind of situation. And that's just not the case with uh, one percenter clubs. It really isn't. Yeah, there's beefs between each other and stuff goes down. But I just cannot, you know, stand behind that belief that that's what they all do. And I get a lot of those comments, and yeah, I know they're from trolls, and I know they're from haters, and I know they're from law enforcement, because God knows every time I do a wall of shame, I get freaking berated by these law enforcement idiots. I really do. They just email, well, this and that. But I do that with Corey Graff's wall of shame because I want to show, hey, if you want to go around calling these guys a gang, well, look at you guys. You're doing the same stuff. Just because one or two members of a chapter is doing something doesn't mean that the whole damn club's a gang, man. If that's your rationale, then guess what? You're the blue gang. Because we cover people that are doing uh, child explo uh, exploitation. We're covering uh, guys who are out there dealing. We're dealing with guys that are doing embezzlement. Yeah. Yeah. Those are your guys with the badges, remember? So uh, to say that just because a club has a certain history doesn't make it in modern time. That one thing with the Mongols, you know, I think it's in the Ninth Circuit right now. What they went after them for was not current, but... From stuff that Doc the Rat Cabeus did a decade ago. But that's the government. You know, they get one thing, they keep building it on you, building it on you, building it on you. And that ain't cool. You know, it's like, man, you Rico the whole damn club? Are you serious? Many of them truck drivers, mechanics, airbrushers, tattoo artists. Crap, there's even lawyers and doctors in some 1% clubs now. Firefighters. So you're going to RICO the whole club. RICO wasn't intended for that. I don't know if you guys understand, but RICO was in, uh, originally intended for the outfit, for the cine or the mob. I'm sorry, I use Chicago terms. That's what it was originally for. Because in the 1970s, they could not get them, or even before then. So what they did was create this law. Then one day, the guy who uh, wrote the law said, Hey, 
well, wait a second, it's just not the mob that we can go after. Let's go after clubs and let's go after street gangs with it. But the original intention was going after the syndicate, the mob. That was the original intent. And I think the government has got way out of hand with it. Way out of hand. It's just like the Patriot Act. Do you know how many freedoms is really taken away from you with that act? Nobody knows that because it's about security. Well, it's not about security when you're targeted. Just saying, man. But that was a uh, real imp uh, interesting conversation that uh, I had with another creator. He was like, well, this guy said this, this guy said that. You know what, guys, when it comes down to busted knuckles, it, it's radio shows, it's, uh, you know, creators. It's a whole lot different on the freaking streets. They can say what they want, say they'll do this, say they do that, put this on that. Really, who gives a hell what they have to say? That's what I told the creator. I was like, if they want to jump, jump. That's the way it goes, man. Uh, because, like I told him, I was like, they don't know your personal business offline, man. They don't know what you are, who you are, who you're with, any of that stuff. That's just freaking troll bull crap. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Uh, you know, that's all I'm saying. You know, they can say this one hates you or that one hates you. Hey, you know what? You can't please everybody is what I told them. So screw them. It is what it is. You know, I wouldn't sit there and worry about it if I were you. <laughs> you know, like I told him, I was like, you know what? Me, I carry a three fifty seven snub nose. Sucker comes out quick. Uh, you know, <laughs> the old saying is, uh, if there's one, knock them out. If there's more than one, you know, start cutting them off. Then when you get three, start shooting them. That's what I believe. But uh, anyway, we're going to get into the news right now. Got a good segment. Don't forget, if you want to, if you want to, make sure to contact us if you want to get a show going. So with that, let's get on to the news for today. Okay, here we go. KSAT.com. Sad state of affairs right now. Sad state of affairs. Uh, for those uh, we covered the Thin Blue Line Law Enforcement Motorcycle Club. There was a wreck that involved the drunk driver. He killed three, and it seems like uh, there was a fourth that just died. Of a, I ain't gonna even. Uh, I'm not gonna even say the driver's name, just like I don't with uh, the Jarhead Seven. Uh, but he was 28, and he was arrested in connection with the crash. Uh, a thin blue line law enforcement motorcycle club member who was hit by a suspected drunken driver nearly two weeks ago died Friday, marking the fourth death in connection with the incident. What's worse is when I say law enforcement doesn't do its job or all the politics in play. This guy was an illegal. This shouldn't have happened where four people died and all the other ones injured. They had a retainer on them. Guess what? They didn't arrest them at that time and send them back over. That is the problem with illegal immigration. On both sides of the aisle, both sides, they want illegal immigration. Why? Because they work the fields. They work the fields. It's that simple. They want low page or low wage workers i need to stop doing freaking 420 anyway uh that's all they want them for both uh parties democrat republicans problem is when they talk about illegal immigration they don't tell you hey this is what we want them for no they just want to let everybody in and this is the kind of stuff happens. I don't know how many times that you can see in the news, and Brie Bart's one of them that really highlights this, is when somebody gets hurt, murdered, raped, whatever it is, it's an illegal alien that could have been sent back and that prevented. But with today's political atmosphere, it's not about uh, being proud to be American. It's about, hey, let's let everybody and their mother from the world into this country, take up the uh, benefits and all that stuff, jobs from our people. So this is a sad state of affairs, this one. Motorcycle Club Public Information Officer David Weed 
David Weed. <laughs> there you go, 420, they should just call him. Said Joseph Lanzo, whose leg was crushed in the crash that occurred on uh, July 18th near Kirkville, succumbed to his injuries on Friday morning. Lazo was uh, a police department sergeant in Niles, Illinois. We said in a news uh, release, that makes three from Niles. Now, Niles is right outside of Chicago. It's like, uh, how could I say, uh, it's right by Skokie. It's, I don't know, about 15, 20 minutes outside of Chicago. Uh, so they lost three in that department. And also, it's funny how, well, they're cops, they deserve to die. You guys are asses. You know, I, you know what? I don't like law enforcement, and I can only take it to a certain level when it comes to, you know, people, you know, dying in a motorcycle accident. I'm not that much of a prick. Also killed in the crash were Joseph Caglia, president of the TBLLEMC Chicago chapter and retired officer with the Nile City Police Department, Jerry Wayne Harbor. Thin Blue Line Ambassador, Lieutenant Colonel Army, retired and pilot for Eastern Airlines, uh, retired, man, Eastern Airlines, I haven't heard that one forever, ever, didn't they go out in the 80s? And Michael uh, White, Secretary of the TBLEMC, or ELMC, Chicago chapter, on the day of the crash, deputies arrested this doofus, 28, Deputies said he crossed over the center line on Highway 16, striking several motorcycles head-on. Exactly what happened in uh, the New Hampshire one with that guy again that shouldn't have been driving with a CDL, but because two states, their systems couldn't communicate, guess what? This happens. He has been charged with four counts of intoxication assault with a vehicle and three counts of intoxicated manslaughter with a vehicle. Uh, it's li uh, due to Lazo's death, it is likely one of the intoxication and uh, assault charges will be upgraded uh, to manslaughter. My guess is, you know, if he don't get life on this deal, is he going to do his time and get sent back? I'm just wondering because... Again, in the New Hampshire case, hey, he was from the Eastern uh, Europe, man, the Eastern Bloc. So is he going to get sent back? Or are we just going to keep him in? You know, that's what I'm asking. Oh, here we go. ICE spokesman Nina Perduta previously confirmed that he is an unlawful present Mexican national. Basically, he's an illegal alien. Leading the agency to file an immigration detainer against him. Well... Uh, then it says in November 2016, ICE encountered him after a DWI arrest in Kirk County, but he did not meet the agency's enforcement priorities at the time. How can he not meet the enforcement priorities at the time? When you cross that border, you're illegal. If you don't do it right, you broke the law. So why the hell wasn't he detained and sent his ass back home? See, I don't get it, man. It's like these people, you know, on the left especially, it's like, well, you know, they're not a threat. They broke the law. God knows, you idiots, who put it against a biker. Uh, he is also has a pending uh, aggravated assault charge stemming from a 2018 incident in Bexar County. Court records show he was out on bail for that case before he was arrested for the deadly crash. Well, then my question is, okay, the DWI arrest didn't do nothing. Well, what about the assault charge then? See, there's so many things that can prevent these type of situations. They just don't do it. And why? Because of the political environment. They're scared of their own damn shadows, man. And four people died, more were injured. Now, you know, then you throw in the Jarhead 7 and you're looking at 11 deaths that could have been prevented. Nobody should die like this. Nobody. I don't care who they are, where they work for, any of that stuff. If it could have been prevented, then it should have been. There's no reason for 11 people to be lying in a ground right now, man. Unfrickin' real. Uh, let's go up to, where are we going here? Australia. And uh, Hell's Angels Clubhouse at Clarence Garden sold after passing in at auction. 
well, you know, it's a good looking place here. Uh, what uh, really sucks is members of the Hells Angels joined onlookers, so they were watching the auction of their own place. And two registered bidders for the auction of the Clarence Gardens property at 2 Albert Street. You know, I wonder if they pulled this off, man. Because what I would have done is uh, have somebody standing out there bidding and just put it in their name. But I don't know how it works in Australia. It had been listed for with a price guide of $550,000. Damn, is it expensive to live over there. Despite interest from buyers in the lead-up to the auction, including developers and individuals looking to retain the home, the property failed to sell under the hammer. There was a single bid of $500,000. Selling agent Stuart Costello from Mar uh, what is it, McGain Real Estate secured its sale shortly after for $535,000. Quote, Interest for the property has been strong and has come from all over. In fact, one of the bidders here today was looking at doing some microbrewing, which I think would be awesome. Other people were looking at it from the warehouse point of view, but most were looking at demolishing and then rebuild and then develop that way. Why the hell would you pay that much money for that kind of property and just tear it down? The commercial zone property... With its heavily fortified front fence was home to the notorious gangs, uh, Hells Angels, Southern Chapter, Adelaide. Uh, the property also includes a gym and a workshop. Uh, the advertiser wrote, while media were banned from entering the property on the day of the auction, photos on realestate.com.au show the property has been somewhat debikied, but there were still several nods to its owners remaining. So, it looks like it sold for $535,000. All I can say is, wow, prices over there are expensive. By the way, when I'm talking about uh, Australia, if you're over there and you want to get a radio program on the station, it'd be cool to have uh, an Aussie talking about what's going on over in the scene over in Australia, New Zealand, all that good stuff on the radio station. So, if you're interested, make sure to email me. Uh, let's go to uh, another story here. Uh, Yankton Net Motorcycle Group visits Delmont to enjoy Town's Progress by Elizabeth Samgrass. Delmont, an area motorcycle group, uh, roared into Delmont this past Saturday, taking advantage of the sunshine and clear skies as well as South Park. Now, this I, I was just talking about earlier, and this one, I, the reason why I put this one up is because of this. Now, this is A-Bait. Now, just listen to what she says. It wasn't just a motorcycle gang, but members of the South Central South Dakota A-Bait, the area group affiliated with A-Bait of South Dakota, or a Brotherhood for Awareness, Training, and Education. Yes, motorcycle gang tied to abate are you freaking serious and i think that's one of the things that really burn my balls when i hear this kind of stuff from the media i talked about it earlier in the show during um, my opening you know people need to stop listening to these type of articles now who she's writing for is probably not going to know any damn better they're going to think a bait's a motorcycle gang. That's the way it works. But at least put in some freaking... I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to move on because I'm kind of mad. Uh, lost my train of thought there. The South Central Group has donated $1,000 to the city in the aftermath of the May 2015 tornado. Uh, the group enjoyed South Park, where they held its uh, July business meeting with the 15 members present. Their chapter is a much larger group of close to 60, explained uh, one of their uh, members, and about uh, 30 had been expected. No matter, they made themselves known, uh, stopping at the Black Sheep Bar and Grill for supper before heading uh, their separate ways. While at the park, Abate members enjoyed water from Dakota Splash, donated by Delmont Community Watch and Ice Supplied by Rebel Wrenches. Yeah, sounds like a gang, man. Well, you know what? You need to put a correction on this article. You really do. Uh, quote, The park looks good, said Lifetime Maybate member Jim Pudden. 
armor adding. The town looks good. Pun had uh, drawn on his years of being uh, District 19's representation at the South Dakota Legislature to help gain financial assistance. Uh, that's good stuff right there. Uh, about a year ago, uh, he said the president of South Dakota Abate recognized him with a lifetime membership. That's why he noted he wasn't wearing leathers on Saturday's visit. <sighs> okay. During the short business meeting, plans were discussed for future meetings as well as approving doing a 50-50 raffle. Uh, he received approval to give a framed picture of the group presentation of $1,000 donated. So that's awesome stuff right there. Uh, he said a separate group, motorcycle riders, provide lobbying in both Pierre and Washington, D.C. proposed laws on favorable. Uh, the motorcyclists are watched and the lobby seeks to derail such a uh, thing. Now, later on in the damn story, after they already said they were one, then it goes back. Abate is not a biker gang a fraternal organization, a motorcycle club, a government branch, or a Harley-Davidson owners group. Their published information states, however, the group is for those interested in motorcycle legislation and education for all persons, regardless of race, creeds, color, sex, age, persons who have various brands, makes, models, blah, blah, blah. That has that's a statement from Abate, but not the damn reporter who wrote this article. You need a retraction, man. You really do. You know, it's buttheads like you that really screw things up. Now, let's go to Clarksville Online. A very interesting uh, deal here. Hank uh, Bonecutter. <laughs> Hank Bonecutter. Uh, Clarksville, Tennessee. You know what? That, it's an awesome little town. As soon as you get off Eagle Mount, I really love it. Uh, these are crazy times we're living in, to say the least. It's an election year. There's a deadly virus among us and unrest in the streets. Like I always say, man, I, you know, you see people now, it's like, dude, you never, you know, survive a nuclear war. You, you just go back shit crazy. Uh, the country is in a state of confusion and misinformation, yet still has the time to argue with every Tom, Dick, and Harry on the planet. We've taken disagreement to another level. One thing I think we can all agree on, though, is that bikers understand diversity and embrace it with love and respect. Very, very true. Very true. You don't have to explain to a biker what it means to respect one another. Well, you know, nowadays with these new jacks, you know, I, I have to disagree right there. We come in all colors, sizes, and lifestyles. From the early days of motorcycles, we were thought of as rebels, daredevils, and gang members. Yeah, it actually does go back quite a bit. Nobody understood the lifestyle, nobody understood the passion and the adventure of touring down the open road on two wheels. There's nothing better, I can tell you that. You know that if you're watching this or listening to this. Bikers do. Since I began this journey, my life has intersected with young and old men and women. Black and white, brown and yellow, I've ridden with liberals, conservatives, Christians, and atheists. That's the thing with atheists, man, and I know I'm going to get shit for this. Nobody's an atheist on their deathbed. You know, the first thing they say right before the date, oh my God, help me. Uh, it didn't matter. We're bikers. Sitting at lunch one day with friends and during a discussion about politics, one of my brothers mentioned he was voting for a particular candidate because of his faith. Another biker chirped. What difference does that make? We didn't have a big argument or heated discussion. We just moved on with our opinion like civilized adults. Yeah, that's something that ain't happening right now. While riding one day with another group of brothers, we happened to pass a military cemetery. As I was trailing another biker, a veteran, he turned towards the cemetery and promptly uh, saluted the following. Brought tears to my eyes. And let's uh, hear about uh, Hank. And, you know, it says who he is. Uh, Hank Bonecutter is a retired broadcaster and media consultant based in Clarksville. His career includes stints at WKDA, uh, a couple of uh, good stations, uh, maybe I should call him. He concluded his career as an owner talk show host at WJZM AM in Clarksville. He's currently uh, the president of the Bonehead Promotion. He's an advertising consultant and... Uh, but he's a rider. He's an avid rider, man. That's cool, man. You know, I really like the reporters that are bikers because they kind of get it. Uh, let's go to Corey Grass, Wall of Shame, shall we? Here we go. 
A police officer charged with stealing guns and other items. <laughs> Foxbaltimore.com. Uh, a police corporal has been arrested after police learned he may have stolen guns and other property from the site of an unintended death. You don't say. No. That's only something a one percenter would do, right? Is that what you're saying? That's what you always say. Corporal Jacob Miskill. Well, guess what? You're in a wall of shame, buddy. Corey Graff got you in there. A five-year veteran of the department is charged with first-degree burglary, third-degree, fourth-degree, theft between $1,500 and $25,000, scheming to commit theft between $1,500 and $25,000, and misconduct in office. Uh, the police chief got information that Miskill may have stolen firearms and other property while responding to a home where someone had died on April 27th. What a freaking schlock! That's terrible. You, you, you freaks, man. Miss Gill is now suspended without pay. Uh, county executive uh, said when a police officer uses the authority bestowed by the badge to facilitate criminal activity of any kind, that officer is undermining law enforcement everywhere. <laughs> well, you know, why do they form that uh, blue uh, wall? You know what I'm talking about? They don't want to cross that wall. This cannot and will not be tolerated. I want to express my heartfelt thanks to the police officers who uncovered the evidence and carried out the arrest of Corporal Miskol. We will not only investigate this crime, but also pursue evidence that might lead to further crimes or misconduct. And then the chief goes on to say the actions of this individual are contrary to the sacred oath that we as police officers take to protect and serve our communities, and to uphold the laws of the state of Maryland. This officer's criminal actions tarnished a badge worn by every police officer and actions are inexcusable. I ordered that the officer be suspended without pay. While this is certainly not who we are as a police department, I understand how this grieves our department and grieves our community. The tarnished place on our badge will be removed by honorable and continual service of our police department, as was demonstrated by the immediate criminal investigation into the incident resulting in the arrest of the police officer. More of my final thoughts on this one. Let's go to that. Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Okay, yeah, I actually got two more hats coming, man. Waiting for those to come in the mail. And, of course, I'll be wearing them on the show if you watch us on video and stuff. Uh, don't forget, if you want to take us to work and all that good jive, man, iTunes, Spotify, everywhere, man. And pretty soon you'll have a radio station to listen to as well. Uh, one of the things that really get to me. Now, in the last story, they put him on leave without pay. But most of the time, you see when something like this happens, and I'm talking with some pretty messed up cases, while they're still under investigation, they get paid. That's at the taxpayer's expense. What is that, man? You know, I know if something happens with you or I at work, and we did something, and it's, there's an investigation, whatever, you're not getting paid, not getting paid. So why do they get paid? They're under investigation for a crime. Why should the taxpayers have to d dish out the money? It's You know what? It's bad enough where these politicians think the taxpayers' money is just a piggy bank to spend the way they want to spend. Oh, you know, that's only $25 million, and I'm talking at the federal level now. Or it's only $150 billion. They don't care. It's not their money. Not their money. So they spend it the way they want. I believe if a, you know, a law enforcement officer is busted, they should be kicked to the curb, suspended, whatever they do, but without pay. That's just like uh, what we're talking about uh, this fall, about the kids going back to school. And usually, I'm a big union guy. Yeah, well, there's truck drivers, stuff like that. But I do not support a teacher's union. I don't. I can't stand them. 
All they want to do is push this crap on our kids, this liberal ideal crap. Now, they have come out and say, well, our people are too scared to go back to work. Really? My wife goes to work. I know a lot of other people that go to work. They are uh, a necessary uh, job, if you ask me. But they don't want to go to work. But they want to still get paid. No, it don't work that way. You don't get to work, you don't get paid. That's the way it should be. But now they're putting all these conditions on, and we want this. Oh my God, just look at the Los Angeles. Uh, you guys, there's a lot of good people in California. What are you guys thinking about voting that way, man? How do you guys do it? Election after election. And it's the same with Illinois and Chicago. They're a bunch of sheep. And then they cry and whine when policies are put out by these leftist idiots. But then they vote for them again. But anyway, Los Angeles Teachers Union put up, well, they want to put up liberal ideals, man. Well, if you don't do this, this, and that, we're not going to go teach. Well, good. Don't pay them then. Most of these teachers suck nowadays. You know, there's been good teachers. I got to say, yeah, there's good teachers, but a lot of them suck. Most of them can't, you know what, the United States, we're so far behind in math and science, it's pitiful. And we're the United States, we're supposed to be the best. But no, it's because we got dummies teaching people. They'd rather teach them this pride and that pride, everything except why pride, uh, than teach math and science. So, uh, that really bugs me, it really does, when they're placed on suspension with pay. That's just stupid. It really is. Stupid. Our first story. Uh, the Thin Blue Line Law and More, uh, Enforcement Motorcycle Club, of course. Another uh, died. I, you know, it didn't give any more information than he just died. So that's four people. And again, that's another incident that could have been pre uh, prevented. I hate to get into politics, though. You know, how many Americans have to die because our politicians are too scared to stand up? You know, for one, they take an oath to the Constitution of the United States, but they refuse to do their job. They only want to do what's going to get them that vote. And until people realize that, wake up, nothing's going to change. That's like uh, Joe Rogan. He's moving his radio station out of, uh, and he's the biggest and the best out there, man. That guy is huge. He's moving from California to Texas. My question, even with Rogan, is, because I believe he was a Bernie supporter, you don't like what's going on in Los Angeles. They're taxing the hell out of you. The freedoms are going. Are you going to bring that same way of thinking to Texas? Because that's what a lot of people do. They'll bring that leftist crap with them. With them. So why not just stay where you're at and, you know, save us all the headaches? Save us the headaches, man. Stay where you're at. You're the itch that vote for them. So when you have an incident like you did with the Thin uh, Blue Line uh, Motorcycle Club where four people died... And not to mention what happened out in New Hampshire with the seven. Eleven people died because ICE couldn't do their job. And I'm not blaming just ICE here. I'm blaming the politicians for, you know, restricting them from doing their job. But they said the DWI arrests didn't meet their criteria for sending his ass home back to Mexico. Well, what about the assault charge? Why didn't that, you know, fit into the little thing right there? That's where I get real confused because 11 lives are now lost. 11 of them. Because our government didn't do its job. I thought that, uh, you know, in the Constitution, the federal government's supposed to protect us from uh, enemies outside of our border. Well, I guess, you know, illegal immigration, when this kind of stuff happens, kind of, you know, loving people, let's remind you. What about the clubhouse for $535,000?
Is that cheap in Australia? I'm just wondering, you know, can you guys, you know, tell me the difference of uh, what it is like to live? How is rent, say, in Melbourne? How much is it to rent like a two-bedroom apartment? It's probably like $10,000 a month or something. I don't know. Uh, but it just seems like that's pretty damn expensive. And it's like developers, you want to tear it down. You just bought that land for that? That's all you, you get? No, not me, man. Not me. Uh, but I really like the uh, last story where you... Oh, I got to mention the A-Bay thing, man. Can you believe that they called that A-Bay to motorcycle gang? That is just ludicrous, and, you know, they had to get a statement from the club about they're not a gang, they're not this, they're not that. It's just crazy how these yuppie reporters, I guess, or these so-called college-educated reporters, by the way, the Constitution, when it was written, freedom of the press, you didn't have to have a college degree to be a legit reporter, you know that, right? Citizens and reporters is what made this country. But, you know, when corporations took it over, it just went downhill because now it's, you know, this left leaning or right leaning. It's not about the truth anymore. It's not about freaking the facts. It's just propaganda is what it is. So I think a correction and a retraction or whatever needs to be done on that story because a bait does a lot of good for the biker community and does a lot of good. For the community as well. They dropped the G note. They didn't have to do that. But they did it. And most bikers and most organizations I know. Do a lot for charity. When you see a whole line of bikers going down the road. The possibility it is that they're out there raising money for somebody. But to label motorcycle gangs. And I covered a lot of that in my intro. That kind of gets to a point where, you know what, you guys are freaks. That's all I have to say. And that's why I like the, the last story where he talked about bikers know about loyalty. They know about brotherhood. Uh, what bonds them is motorcycles. And that really does is what bonds us is motorcycles. So I really like that story. But that wall of shame by Corey Graff, that was a good one, man. Goes in to a crime or into a scene and steals the person's guns and stuff. That is, uh, that is freaking unreal, man. Who does that? Who does that? And man, it's a cop that does it. And at least the only thing I can say is they put him on freaking uh, leave without pay. So what do you guys think about to, uh, today's news? Let me know in the comments section of all the platforms. Really appreciate the numbers on iTunes and Spotify. Man, our radio is freaking killing it, man. Uh, that's kind of why, you know, I decided, hey, maybe it's time to go off full-blown uh, freaking radio station. One thing I didn't like about it was the licensing fees. Holy cow, do I have to pay a lot of money for licensing to play that music. Uh, but it is what it is, man. I can see a you, you know your band. You put that work out, and yes, I will be taking independent uh, musicians uh, submissions. I might just do uh, a radio hour with just newbies, man. Try to help you get your music out there. But with all that, you guys stay safe. Don't forget to go over to Instagram and all that good stuff. Info at insanethrottle.com if you need to get a hold of me. Or you can call the studio phone at 847-957-1686. Leave a message. I'll talk to you I later. I said goodbye. Have a good one, guys. Adios. Ciao. So long. Get your hat. Don't down. forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, motorcycle rallies and bikers helping the community, motorcycle club editorials and more. And don't forget to visit us on Facebook. Get involved in the conversation. Watch videos done on Motorcycle Madhouse and more. Also, we have Instagram. Yes, Instagram. 
you have material that is not seen anywhere else. So don't forget, get on our platforms, check out your daily biker news. Rock on! Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at BaggerSyndicateCycles.com. Your show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the throttle today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!